Today, I'm gonna to be talking about climbing the freelance ladder and explaining what that means. So, when you learn how to program outside of school, one problem that you will probably face is that when you go to apply for jobs, you don't have any experience and people don't want to hire anyone without any experience. So it's the classic chicken and egg problem. How do you get experience when every job requires experience? So a solution I came up with to solve that problem is called climbing the freelance ladder. And it involves freelancing to gain experience before you apply to jobs and starting with really small jobs and working your way up to larger and larger and larger jobs so that you avoid the problem of not having experience because small jobs don't require very much experience when you're talking about five or ten dollar jobs on the different freelance platforms. So I recommend starting with one of the different freelance platforms. If you're not familiar, a freelance platform is a website like Upwork.com, Freelancer.com, Fiverr, there's a bunch more, and they match clients with freelancers. So in this case, freelance programmers. And it's a great way to get your programming career started. That's how I got started. When I got hired at eBay, one of the reasons I was able to land that job was because I had been freelancing for a while. And so I had experience working professionally, even though I had never worked at a big company as a software engineer, I had been freelancing. So I didn't just apply and say, you know, I, I'm completely new with no experience. So Okay, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at Upwork.com and I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of how Upwork works and show you a little bit around the website. So this is Upwork.com, as you can see. This is what it looks like as a client. I actually hire people on here all the time. So if you go to post a job, I can create a new job post. You can look for short-term or a dedicated long-term work. So I'm gonna click short-term. You enter the name of, of your job post. So I can say Python developer wanted. You pick a different a category, a job category. So you've got backend development, full stack development, all that good stuff. You describe what your job is. And you go through a couple more steps and you can pick whether it's a one-time project, an ongoing project, you can add screening questions. And eventually you go through a couple more of these, you go through location, visibility, budget, and then you post your job. And when, you're po when you post your job, it looks something like this. So here's a job that I posted a while ago, two months ago, looking for a Python developer. And as you can see, there's just a bunch of information and it shows how many people have pro uh, proposed to work on this project, etc. Okay, so on my end, as a client, I can actually review the different proposals. So it looks like this, so different freelancers that specialize in programming all applied to this job. And there's a couple of things that are important. One, they, they submit what they charge an hour. You can also see how much that freelancer has earned. Man, okay. And then you can see their job success rate. So it's really important that when you apply to jobs, that you at least get one good review from a friend or a family member or someone that you just personally know so that you're not applying to jobs without having earned a single dollar. Like this, in this situation, zero dollars earned. That doesn't look very good. So I would immediately disqualify that candidate. It's also really important to have a high job success rate. 
So uh, someone like this with an 80% job success rate, there's no way I'm hiring them. So I would immediately disqualify them. This is a top rated badge. So that's what you get when you're one of the top freelancers on Upwork which is definitely a really good sign and something that I look for, but they also have a rising talent badge. So you can get that pretty quickly. As you can see, this person's only earned $800, but Upwork has flagged them with this rising talent badge because they're doing a lot of great work. They're getting good reviews. So it doesn't take a ton to get your rising talent badge, get some earnings, get some, some positive five-star reviews and put yourself in the running for getting hired for a project like this. But those are the, the, the things to keep in mind. You have to have good reviews. Let's take a look at his profile. I'm sure he has some, some great reviews. Yeah, so as you can see, he has a five-star review here. So you really wanna start with at least one five-star review. And then the as a freelancer, you write a cover letter. So this is his cover letter and he's talking about saying he's a, a senior full stack developer with seven plus years of experience, et cetera. And I'm gonna be talking more in later videos about how to write a great cover letter and go further into depth on how to create a great freelance profile and make sure that you have success. But this is the overall idea. So basically a client creates a job posting and then you as a freelance programmer submit yourself, you submit your cover letter and you know basically apply for the job and the employer if they like what they see they can message you or they can just hire you straight away by clicking hire this freelancer and then you guys work together to to complete the project so the really cool thing about climbing the freelance ladder on something like upwork.com on a website like upwork.com is that you can start with super small projects so i'm going to switch to a freelancer really quick. Okay, so you can search for jobs. I recommend starting with web scraping. You've already learned Python and you've created a web scraper already. So I recommend starting with web scraping because you're getting to the, the point where you can program professionally doing web develop development or app development can take a good amount of time, but you can get proficient in web scraping pretty quickly. If we turn this off, this this button only uh, makes it so you can only see jobs that are in the US. You can see that there's 1,450 web scraping jobs available right now. So as I said, you can master web scraping really quick and with a lot of the knowledge that you already know, and there's a ton of web scraping jobs available on platforms like Upwork. So this is how I got my start. I did a lot of web scraping jobs right when I was getting started. And the really cool thing is there's some very small budget web scraping projects, which is important. Look, this is a web scraping job that's $100. Here's one that's 150. So this is sort of a key part of climbing the freelance ladder is that you start with really small projects. So I'm seeing if I can find an even smaller one. Okay, here we go. Data collection, estimated budget, $20. So when you're looking for for different projects, it looks like this. When you're looking as a freelancer, you can see how much the project pays. You can see this one is entry level. So this would be the perfect project for a new programmer to that's trying to clean, climb the freelance ladder to start with. So they're looking for someone entry level, they're paying 20 bucks, and they want you to collect 950 phone numbers and paste them into a spreadsheet, which you absolutely could do after taking this course. So this is a type of project that you want to apply for a $20 project. You can even apply for five or $10 projects, but you want a really small project to start with. And that way you can start getting positive reviews. And the great thing is that no one is going to ask you for references or care really about your experience when they're only charging $20. They just want someone that can get the job done. So you're not gonna have to pass an interview like you would if you just straight started applying to jobs at a company. You're not gonna have to pass an interview. You're not gonna have to give references. It's much easier to get a job like this. So the whole idea of climbing the freelance ladder is that you start with a $20 job like this, you get a five-star review. Then you work on a $25 project 
get another great review. Then you work on a $50 project, a $60 project. Pretty soon you're doing a $100 project and on and on and on, climbing your way up. Then you can work on $500 projects. The whole time you should be building skills. You should be learning web development or app development or whatever you want to specialize in. But the entire time you can be climbing up the freelance ladder, racking up five-star reviews, and eventually you know, you're know, you applying to $1,000 projects and at that point you've accumulated all these different references and five star reviews that you could even get to the point where you're landing contracts that are available on Upwork that are say six month contracts. And that's like very close to a job. I mean, there's a lot of basically jobs on Upwork that are six month contracts at startups that pay you know the same price or the same amount per hour as if you you had a job. And that sort of would be the ultimate goal is to work from $5 to $10 to $20, $100 up to a project that pays $50 an hour and is like a six month contract. At that point, once you finish that, you could start applying to jobs at software companies. And instead of saying you have absolutely no experience, you would say, I have you know six months of experience as a freelance developer, that's going to look really great in the interview. You can talk about all the different freelance projects you, you've uh, that you've successfully completed, and you have a much higher chance of getting hired. So that's what climbing the freelance ladder is all about. I hope this was helpful, and I will be covering more about how to be a successful freelance freelancer in the next video. So awesome! Thanks, guys, and I will talk to you soon.